Shout out to Thomas Loop on Patreon for nine months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on my channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up guys, Quez Your Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create an abstract banner in Photoshop. This is actually a pretty simple tutorial creating shapes with the pen tool. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you do, please leave a like on the video. At 100 likes, I will put the download for the file in the description for you guys to download or you can get on my Patreon right now if you're a $5 tier member or higher. Also, if you enjoy, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. I cover a lot of things in my tutorials, so you might as well subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later if it's not your thing. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in Photoshop and I'm gonna be creating a Twitter header template. So let's go ahead to File New and I'm gonna do 3000 pixels by 1000 pixels at a 300 resolution and we're gonna click OK. Also, I'm using my um, Wacom tablet to do this since it's a lot of pen tool I prefer to use that over a mouse so I'm not going to be right clicking I'm going to be using control click um, so if you see control clicks it's basically right clicks uh, but anyways we want a white background and you want to pick a few colors so I'm gonna be using my color scheme and I have a dark color and then a pink and a blue so I'll put the hex codes for those on screen right now and basically you guys want to go to your color add the hex codes here and then click add to swatch or add add to swatches and that will add it to your library so you can easily select and pick these colors if you don't have your library tab up you just have to go to window libraries and then you can move it around i have mine over to the right side of my layers you can put it wherever you'd like but once you have the three colors which are going to be this blue this dark purple and this pink uh, we can go ahead and get started and create a new layer the first shape we want to create is going to be the dark purple one and it's going to be the big one that takes up about half the document. So let's start kind of in the middle and we're going to go down and create a point like so. Uh, maybe go up off the canvas, come back down, create a littler little point and come through. And then we're going to close that off on the left side. And since we're using paths, we can adjust this. And I have my reference over to the left monitor, so I'm gonna try to recreate this. Uh, if you hold command and click and select, you can select these points and move them around. So let's do something like this. Made that a little smaller. Okay, that's a pretty good shape. Once you like the shape, you can come in and go to solid color. And even if you don't like the shape, we can always come back and edit it because we go down to solid color click OK on the purple. If it changes it to a different color, go ahead and just click um, the purple over here and it will make it that color. So that's why we do that, it's nice and easy. Uh, and then if you wanna change the, um, the shape, first of all, click Command Off and if you still have the path, um, right click and delete path. Uh, and then if you press Command again, you can come in here and select these points and still move them around. So you can see you adjust it and it adjusts the color. So you don't have to be finalized at any point. You can always come back and edit these paths, which is really nice. Now we want to go ahead and create another path. So let's create a new layer. And this is going to be the most dominant shape. It's going to be kind of like a lightning bolt or a Gatorade logo. Um, that's how I view it. But we're going to start here, kind of follow this angle and come down. And then let's go across slightly, down through. Let's go back up. Maybe even further like that. Um, come back close to this point, create another triangle here, and then we're gonna create another triangle with the top. So we have something like this. And let's make some adjustments. So I made a few adjustments there. I think I like this shape. So let's go ahead and add our solid color. Click OK, and then I want to add that to pink. And then let's delete the path. Cool, let's go ahead and create another pink layer. This is going to be sort of similar, but it is going to be slightly different. I'm going to follow kind of this angle here. Um, that's the key when you're adding these shapes is to kind of follow other angles so it stays consistent and feels like a full composition. This one's going to be a little smaller. Something like that. Okay, let's adjust some of these points again. I think I like that. Let's go ahead and make that a solid color. Cool. And I'm pretty happy with those shapes. Let's go ahead, create another new layer. Now we're going to add a couple white shapes. 
So these will look like cutouts because our background's white. And I'm gonna add two, basically one here and one here. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm gonna try to follow one of these angles. So I'm gonna follow this angle, make a triangle and come around here. And let's do the same thing over here. Maybe we come down into here. And then let's come back around and close that. I'm gonna adjust this point, cool. Pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and make that a solid color. This one's easy. We can just eye drop the background. Cool. Click off command or control delete path. There is our white shapes and you can name these as we go, by the way. Um, I will not be naming them, but you can if you'd like. Let's create another new layer and this time we're going to add some blue. So we're actually going to be adding one below everything. So I'm going to do that one first, which is going to be around here. Let's go ahead and create a shape like so. And it's going to come down like that and then come over and close. Cool. This one will definitely be adjusted. And we'll just, we'll just go with this for now because we'll adjust the purple one. Let's go ahead, oop, click the blue, command click. Doom. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this one below the purple because that's where it will be. And then go back to the top, create a new layer. And let's add a couple more blue. So I want one like kind of up in this spot and then I want one over in the left. Okay, that, that one took some finagling, but I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead, solid color. And let's go ahead and add the last one, which will be a simple triangle. So that one's the easiest of them all. And of course you could do this in any order you want. You could add more blue. You could continue to go ahead and mess around with it. I'm gonna come back to the purple one here and adjust it to look a little better with this blue. Do something like that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And there are all our shapes. Now um, I added a little layer style to these. So if I open up the blue, and go to gradient overlay. I did a soft light gradient at 42% of white to black. Actually, it's black to white since it's reversed. And I have mine at a 74 degree angle. You can make it any angle you want, um, but I did that. I also added a tiny drop shadow, six pixel distance, zero, zero overlay black. And basically if I go ahead and right click and copy that layer style and paste it throughout, it will add a subtle effect that you won't be able to notice too much in the screen recording, but it adds something that I think looks a little nice. It makes it pop a little more. You can kind of see the gradient on the purple um, best, um, but you'll see it a little bit better here in a second. Let's open up these bottom two layers, this blue and the dark purple, and uncheck the drop shadow from those because they're not necessary. And now we're gonna duplicate all these layers and add a clipping mask above them. So what I mean by that is go to the bottom layer, which is the blue, command J to duplicate, alt, and make it a clipping mask. And you wanna do that to every layer. Once you do that, press command and select one of the clipping masks and go through and select them all. And what we wanna do is right click clear layer style and then click black to make all of that black. Um, so it's all gonna be black overlay, except the purple one. We want that one to be a white overlay. So let's go ahead and make that one white. And then the white one, we wanna make a blue overlay. Okay, so everything's a black overlay, except the dark purple has a white overlay and then the white has a blue overlay. And we wanna select all of these, set them to overlay and about 50%. And we might have to make some adjustments here as we go. Um, and then the white one, which has the blue overlay, we want to just leave that as a normal. And we could bump down the opacity to 25 instead. Now we have the time consuming part, which is going through and adjusting these paths that are clipping masks to create kind of some like depth to it and some shading and lighting. Um, and basically I'm going to show you one of these and I'm going to show you the big purple lightning bolt one. So let's go ahead and select this point here and we're gonna bring this down and it will create like a lighting effect here, which is exactly what we want. Um, then let me grab this right one and maybe bring it over. That looks pretty cool. We could bring this one down maybe. Cool, and then maybe this one. 
yeah i think that's pretty cool um so basically you just want to go ahead and repeat that process for all these shapes uh, and it can be tedious and it's going to be a lot of experimentation but just feel free to mess around and do what you think looks best um, if you're struggling i would limit your movements so maybe you just come in and move one point like that and then you get a nice simple like triangle that's bisected Okay, there we go. I think I'm happy with all my shapes and everything. I'd probably realistically spend a little more time on this main one because um, I think it looks a little wonky still, but basically you guys get the idea. Um, you can also add some texture here. Uh, if I create a new layer, I have a brush from my brush pack, my Quezzy brush pack two. That's just a bunch of dots. So if I come in and we get our dark color, create a new layer and click down to add some of these points and then let me erase some of it. Kind of clicking randomly to erase it. Um, and then let's duplicate it, Command T, flip horizontal and have some over on the left side too. Um, that just adds a little bit of texture if you want some of that. Um, I personally think it improves it a little bit and then finally you can come in and duplicate a couple of these so let's duplicate the dark purple one I'm gonna bring it to the very bottom let's duplicate the light blue one that's on the bottom and bring that one to the bottom as well and let's make the light blue one dark purple get the bigger one we'll move it over to the left and command T rotate it slightly and set it to about 5% opacity. And we'll do the same thing with this light one. Maybe just have it over to the right and set it to 5% opacity, which that adds a little bit to the white background because it's a little boring right now. And then finally, you can add some text. Um, let's get the pink. I'm using a font called Boston Caps and let's just call this abstract. And let's up the size a little bit looks cool and then if you want and then if you double click unlock that background layer select everything and i want to add a little bit of a vignette so i'm going to press command j command e command a command c command v and basically that gives me a cropped version of this and if we go to filter camera raw filter go down to optics bump up the black vignette click ok we get a nice vignette and then there is our banner um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, please leave a like. Again, at 100 likes, I will put the file for you guys to download, or you can get it on my Patreon right now. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube if you enjoy. I appreciate any support that you're willing to give. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.